can make a few prunes here in the landscape real quick. This has been driving me absolutely nuts for a very long time. The oak leaf hydrangea never drops its leaves completely in the winter time. And it's probably the worst time to be pruning it, but we're gonna go for it. Back to that first bud. Oh my gosh, this is so satisfying. You're going to town. Oh, that was so satisfying. Thank you so much. And it's only Monday. And it's only Monday. <laughs> just getting fired up. Let's just get it fired up. Oh, easy now, easy now. Feeling like Mariah's on fire on Monday. Cindy Crawford's almost done. This has been a journey for sure. She is real close to redefining the standard of what a Rocky Mountain Juniper bonsai can be. Why Cindy? Well, this is the, the beauty mark on the Tom Benda. A little kiss from the kiln. That just makes it even sexier. Repot was really severe. We let it recover and it's well on its way. We've got baby Kraken. Also, complete change out of soil repot. Tree is rocking and rolling and I'm gonna reduce its size. I go through these species waves um, where you know I'll focus on the pines diligently, I'll focus on the spruce and the hemlocks diligently. And, and, and then you let them evolve and develop and you know this year is gonna be a juniper year, I can just already tell you, um, juniper and then deciduous because we've got so much deciduous work that we're doing. The past three weeks have been monstrosities for work, uh, but we are setting a foundation for 2021 that is going to be quite powerful, so it's exciting. And then to see the workshop filled with trees again and to be coming in and doing work on trees, uh, it's just great. It's just great. Let's do it. Yet, or are you making me do it all? Why are you making Troy do all the work? Because I put all these in. That's oh, well, you I'm... did. Yeah. So he gets to do the easy part. No, Troy and I did this one together, and I did those two. So basically, so you you've done most of the work. I've, I've done most of the work. Yes. Troy's not having it. Okay, let's work these two talking. I can't do math on camera, so. It's a lot of pressure to be on camera doing bonsai. Troy wasn't having the camera at all. He's like, every time the camera's on, I can't even, I can't even do math. So I, I took that as my cue. Yeah. You know what Troy can do? Uh, thespian related activities. <laughs> I told him that I showed you. Troy's, uh, Troy's interpretation, or I would say uh, impressionistic uh, recounting of the Revenant was like one of the more powerful things I've seen on film in a long time. It was moving, it was emotional, it was provocative, absolutely incredible. Do you think that the world is prepared for that? I don't think the world knows what it's missing, that's for sure. Now whether or not we can talk Troy into ever getting to share that with you all, that too is a concern of mine, but we're gonna work on him because it was a powerful performance, Emmy winning for sure. I guess you missed your chance to put it in, huh? I mean, I feel like I can still fit. I mean, you just gave me the great, the perfect transition. I, I may just to make sure that he stays employed at Mirai in terms of wants to continue working here. I may ask him secretly after this. Let's go ask him. Let's go ask him. <laughs> this is important. Hey, Troy. I have something kind of important to ask you. You did a monologue last week. Oh, Jimmy Kimmel and... No, no, The Revenant. Oh, The Revenant, oh. Can we share that with the Mirai Live members or with Mondays at Mirai? Fitzgerald knew the answer to his question. Yeah. 
I heard you were listening to a book. Oh, the Revenant? I saw the movie. Oh, the movie's crap. There was a scene there when he was captured by the uh, Lake of Pawnee. Yeah. Out of Texas. And it was incredible. They, they captured him. They tied him up. And he finally woke up from, you know, being knocked out. And he looked over there, there was this huge pile of wood. They're getting ready to, you know, get, stoke this big pile of wood. And he realized they weren't going to burn him, right? And so he thought, what do I do, what do I do? And so, I guess they used to trade with Indians at that time. And so he had some rouge in one of his pockets or something like that. And he was able to get that rouge out. And he painted his entire face red. And when they came to get him, to put him on this, what do they call it, a pyre? Mm -hmm, that pyre, sense, right? Yeah. And they went to, to pick him up and put him on this pyre. He went, Rah! and it freaked them out. Here was this white man with this beard and red face. They just completely just, it was quiet for just a moment. He started thinking, I gotta say something. I gotta, I gotta follow us up. And he says, our father who art thou in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know, with a red face. And they're just like, what the heck is going on here, right? <laughs> well, they figure out that he must be a spirit, right? And so it's like, we can't burn this spirit because that's going to be bad luck for us, right? So they quickly undo him. They give him his gun and all of his stuff back. And he was with them for like two years, I think, what the book had said. Why didn't Hollywood cover that? It was the most powerful monologue I've seen. It was amazing. Oh, it was great. It was great. Yes. That's funny. Outstanding. Funny. I thought it was wonderful. <laughs> Hot dog. You need to edit that and get that live as soon as possible. This is one of the one of the trees that got unfortunately shoved off of a bench. So we're kind of doing a reclamation process. Beyond branches getting broken, most of the dead wood was torn off, so now I gotta reaffix it, which, you know, it'll never be the same. But we can make it look pretty good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you through the process of reattaching dead wood. Let's do it. I already have holes drilled for some of these. Want it to be just slightly smaller. That feels like a very valuable piece there. Bing, we're gonna grind these down. This is where it gets fun. Check this out. I bought some bonsai trees. And here's the beautiful thing about it. It doesn't even tell you what the species is. But what species is it? I don't know. <laughs> it's a bonsai. You know? Of course. A bonsai? That's a species of tree, isn't it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is exactly what perpetuates the problem. Here's the thing. We're gonna do something cool with these at some point in the future. But currently I'm reveling in my new bonsai. And I had to take them out of the holeless tray that they were sold in. So anyways. Cork bark black pine, ready for a little bit of water. This first water after repotting. Six days on a heat bed at 80 degrees. And I, last night was looking at it and saying, gosh, I really want to water it. I think I can leave it for another, another evening on the heat beds and I come in and it's perfectly dry. This is the one that gets me roots. That's the one right there. Boom. Okay. I waited six days for that moment, six days. And last night I had to talk to myself about it. One. This is so that we can countersink it into the wood, but have the strength of a full-size screw. We don't want a big countersunk hole. Max it out. All right. So this piece connected to this.
Nice. All right. That almost gets us completely back to the way that it was. I gotta figure that out. That's the next one. It's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, it was the first book I'd ever listened to. So, oh, okay. so since then, other books never compare to this one because he reads it in such a way that he gives you characters in his, in his, in his narration. Do you know what's 40 minus 30, Bridger? I thought that was a standard norm. in books. Well, I, I downloaded another book. It was just like, just basically just a textbook reading of whatever the account was. And it's like, <laughs> delete. No reason to be listening to this thing. <laughs> 